All right, all right, all right. Testing complete. Check. 100 candles made and ready to go. Check. 10 cent options with 10 candles in each cent. Check. Labels. Check. Prices. Check. Website and or Etsy site. Check. Optimism and enthusiasm. Check, check. Here we go. Nothing's happening. Huh. Let's see. Today's the 14th and I launched on the 1st. Should probably have something by now. Is this thing on? Come on, do something. Disappointment and crushed dreams. Check. Well, that was depressing. But don't worry, you're not alone and not all hope is lost. In the famous words of the Joker, it's all part of the plan. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Wade with Black Tie Barn. And if you are interested in any other videos about candle making and running a small business, that's what we do here on this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. Of course, it's free. And a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of today's video. So back to the doom and gloom of struggling to make and sell your own candles or other products. Sounds rough, I know. But I also said it's all part of the plan. Because think about it, if it was that easy, would that be a good thing? Because here's the thing about candle making or selling handcrafted products or running any kind of small business. The barrier to entry, specifically in this industry, is very low. Literally anyone can start and learn how to do it and jump right in the water. The difference comes after that point. Anyone can dip their toes in the water but are you willing to get in? And if so, how deep? Are you willing to take some lessons, take some risks, learn to navigate the waters? Okay, I'll stop. That metaphor is probably drowning out. Nope, it's not. Would you rather doggy paddle or learn how to swim? Do you wanna be a passenger or a captain? Or maybe even a Polynesian wayfinder, just mapping your own course? Okay, now, now I'm done. The point is this stuff just doesn't work automatically on its own without some guidance. Products don't sell themselves and businesses don't just thrive on their own. And this isn't true only for grand level businesses, but even on a small scale as well. You might be making amazing products. And if so, that's quite a, an accomplishment all on its own. But at some point, if the products just continue to sit there, that intrinsic satisfaction you get from that accomplishment will start to fade. Simply making the products is only part of the battle. So what can you do? And if I was struggling to sell my products, what would I do? Well, first and foremost, I'd probably subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I know I just asked you, but check just in case, because literally this channel is dedicated to that purpose, helping other candle makers, beginner, immediate to advanced, and helping those run a successful DIY or handcrafted business. Shameless plug, check. But beyond that, seriously, what can you do? Well, I like to put things in perspective. So if I was in your shoes, what would I do? Well, I like to tackle pretty much all problems systematically, very logically. And I like to do that working backwards. So I start with the end goal and work myself backwards. It's basically my way of troubleshooting an issue and trying to come up with solutions to that problem. And I start by basically mind mapping a series of questions. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. And hopefully this helps many of you kind of chart your own course and figure out what you can do to help your products sell better. Like I said, I start with what's the end goal? What am I trying to accomplish? I wanna sell these candles that I made. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> to sell those products, I have to have a way to sell those products. So the next question I have is, what methods do I have in place to help sell my candles? For example, website or Etsy, basically an e-commerce platform, Facebook and, and Instagram or a social media platform, or just in-person, craft shows, things like that. Let's start with in-person. And truly, this is mostly just a numbers game. The more you do, the better you get, and the more you learn. So I would start with, are there more shows that I could do? If not, can I host a candle party, maybe at my house or a friend's place? Think of it like a Tupperware party or a sipping shop. You or your friend invite a bunch of people over, you guys have a good time, hang out, you bring a bunch of samples or full products, let people actually sample your products in real life and give them a promotion, a discount for doing so. And that, that usually does very well for people. Not only do you get some direct sales and a quick win, but you also get some actual real life feedback. Speaking of which, the next question I would have in these in-person events is what feedback have I received so far? What can I do better or what can I do more of that's currently working well? Next, are people not buying anything from me in person? If not, why? Could it be the labeling? Could it be the size of the products? Could it be the product options? Could it be the fragrances? Could it be the price? One thing that I think it's important to know is if you're having trouble selling your products in person 
direct sales, it's gonna be harder to sell online. In person is much easier to grab someone's attention. People see with their eyes, they're gonna be drawn to your product, they're gonna have a chance to actually see, smell, and touch that product in real life. That is usually a much easier conversion than it is to try to sell online. So if you're already having problems selling in person, I would solve that problem first, if it were me. This is one of the reasons I've always suggested that even if you do not want to sell in person, do craft shows, run a retail shop, anything like that, and you purely want to do business online, it's still very, very good to do some in-person events, even if they're just test events, uh, local groups, testing for feedback, it's very important to get that live direct feedback from customers. It will really help you set yourself in the right direction. Okay, so then I would look at the Instagram and, and the uh, Facebook and social media platforms that I have. First of all, am I present there? And if I'm not, which one should I start with? That would be the first couple questions. And I already am, and you probably already are. So the next question for me would be, well, how are my posts doing? Is engagement well? Am I getting a lot of views? Should I post more? And if I'm already posting a lot, how are those posts doing? How is my engagement? Determine which posts are doing well and do more of those. Determine which posts are not doing very well and figure out why. See what others are doing well and do more of that. And then I would ask, is this just something I'm not very good at doing or have much interest in doing? That would be me. So consider asking someone for help. And next, just remember that social media is a visual platform for the most part. So I would be looking at my product photos and how good are they? Remember, customers experience with their eyes first especially on social media. Next, do I have a call to action? Do I have a way to convert viewers and engagements into sales? If not, what's the point? Part of social media and part of running a business is not to do anything without purpose. If you're just posting something just so you can say you did, I think you're missing out on a big opportunity. Each view is an opportunity for a potential sale. Next, I would look at my actual selling platform, which is my website on Shopify or maybe your Etsy shop. Again, first and foremost, how are my product photos? How is my overall design of my website? Are my prices reasonable? What incentives do I have that others might not? Free shipping, samples, freebies, creative labels, catching names, creative designs, personalization, and so on. How is the website navigation and user experience? How is the checkout experience? What am I doing to promote these products, my website, and my business. Could I be reaching out for collaborations, working with other small businesses, maybe local boutiques in my area? Could I give away some products to encourage some feedback and some reviews? Perhaps I could consider starting a Facebook group for my business and my products and build that community over time. Do I have a budget? If so, should I consider running some Facebook or Google ads? You really don't have to spend a ton to get going with that. A mix of ad spend along with organic growth can be really, really powerful. Ad spend can get eyes faster, but organic growth keeps eyes longer. Consider using them both together. Is my branding and my products clear? Do customers understand and know what they are getting? And is it compelling? Is there an opportunity for me to tell a better story with my branding? What can I do to improve all of these things? So I've kind of broken this down and I can visually see all the possible issues, potential causes. What can I do to improve all of these things or at least some of these things? I would brainstorm everything and literally mind map everything out. I can promise you, guarantee you, that there is a gap somewhere, something that you're missing, something you could be doing better, something you could be doing differently, something you could be doing more of. How do I know? Because it applies to all of us, every one of us and every business. How much more are you willing to do than the next person? How much are you willing to put in? How much do you care to make this work? Selling candles and soap and other handcrafted products or really running any kind of small business is not a get rich quick scheme at all. It takes time. Most good things do. All right, so take all of this work that you've done, all this analysis and breaking everything down, this mind map, and now interpret it. And when you do that, keep the Pareto principle in mind, which is 20% of the actions lead to 80% of the results. In other words, focus on the stuff that matters most. What is going to make the biggest impact? Because everything else really is, is just kind of a distraction to your end goal. So determine which of these issues or solutions on your mind map here will make the biggest impact. I mean, for example, if I look at my mind map and I can see that everything about my website really seems fine, like I'm not identifying any major issues, well then maybe I'm having a problem just getting traffic to my website. So the question for me would be, what can I do to get more traffic? Should I offer some promotions? Should I do some collaborations? Should I leverage social media more than I already am? Or maybe I need to add links that reference back to my selling platform on my social media post. Maybe I should consider running some ads. Or maybe I'm getting traffic, but conversion, converting that traffic into sales is the issue. Well, in that case, maybe I just need better product photos. Maybe people are getting to my site and they just don't really like what they see. Or maybe I need to reevaluate my prices. Maybe my website's just slow and clunky and hard to use. Or maybe you're finding that the problem is in person. You're having a hard time even selling your products to people you meet directly. 
Well, that's usually a telltale sign that there's something wrong with the branding, the look, the feel, the options, the aesthetics, your labeling, something isn't drawing those customers in in the first place. So work on your vessel and your options and your colors and your labels and your whole branding, everything about your product visually. And of course, make sure your products smell good as well. And don't worry if all of this seems overwhelming, like I don't know how to do some of these things we're talking about, or if you're doing your mind map and you run into issues that you don't really know how to do yourself, don't worry a little bit later, I'm gonna offer you another option that might help with some of that. The truth is it's impossible to create this just blueprint that solves all the problems for everyone in every business because everyone in every business is different, it's unique, and it's gonna have different issues to deal with. But this tactical methodology that I'm talking about in this video of troubleshooting the issues, finding potential causes, which leads to potential solutions, is something that I always use and it works well for me. And I hope that it helps you kind of hone in on the issues that you're facing and why, and maybe offer some insight on how you can solve them. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I'm in a different situation. This doesn't really apply to me. I have no problems selling to customers in the first place. My problem is getting repeat customers, reorders. People buy once and just don't come back. Now that is an indicator that there might be something wrong with your actual products. You see, everything that we've talked about to this point really hasn't taken in the quality of your products into account at all. Why? Because no one even knows about the quality of your products. They're not even getting your products to begin with. Part of running a business is making sure you get your products in the hands of customers first. Like I talked about earlier, you could be making amazing products, but if no one knows about it, what does it matter? But if you're one of those people that have no problems getting your products to customers, you just have a hard time selling more to the same customers, that's when we have to look at the quality of the product. Maybe you should rotate some fragrances in and out. Maybe you should take your worst sellers and replace them with different products. Or if you're struggling to sell really any of them, then work on your entire candle recipe. Maybe different fragrances. Maybe they're not strong enough. Maybe the candle just isn't burning very well. Remember, initial customers, it's all about aesthetics and branding and getting them to buy in in the first place. Repeat customers is about the quality and the value of your product. So we've talked about several ways to identify what a problem is and some options of how to kind of dissect, analyze, and interpret how to maybe solve some of those problems. And again, it's gonna be unique for everyone. But during this process, you might find that some of these solutions, some of these skills that you need to solve the problem just aren't your strong suit. Now, for example, maybe you need better product photos, but you just suck at product photography. Or maybe you want to experiment with some Google or Facebook ads, but you have literally no idea where to start. Maybe you want to work on a website redesign, but that's not your strong suit either. Well, that's where the sponsor of this portion of today's video comes in, Skillshare. Each of the skills that I just mentioned, not to mention countless others, can all be learned on Skillshare. It's an online learning platform where you have access to thousands of classes really on any kind of topic or skill that you want. You can start, stop these classes anytime, and they're completely ad-free. And there is absolutely no limit to the amount of classes you can take. You can literally just keep learning stuff. I literally watch, take classes on Skillshare all the time. Sometimes out of necessity and other times just because I, I just want to, I just find it interesting. For example, if you're a brand new, a beginner doing any kind of craft shows, then check out this class called Top Tips for Selling at Art and Craft Shows, Part One, Preparing a Show by Stein Wyman. And actually there's two other parts to this series. The first part is about prepping for the show. The second one is kind of during the show. And the third one is after the show. The video goes into things like prepping for the show and making sure you're following this to-do list or checklist for the show, what to do during the show, and even stalking for the show. Or maybe you're just worried about all the different things you have to do as a business owner. And it just seems overwhelming and you're not sure how to manage your own time and productivity. Well, they have classes for that as well. Like this one from Brooke Glazer called Productivity for Artists, Organizing Yourself for Success. And there are tons of videos about time management, tasking, and productivity. But I thought this one was kind of interesting because it's about an artist, which is very relatable to handcrafting. And if neither of these are something you really need help with, there are tons of classes on all different types of topics and skills. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they provided you a good deal as well. So the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description below will get a free one month trial to Skillshare, unlimited classes. At the very least, I just hope this video kind of helps the gears start turning. So when you run into issues, you don't just give up. There is no magic easy red button to turn no sales into sales, just like that. If there was, I literally would have destroyed that button years ago. The best thing you can do as a candle maker or small business owner is to learn to identify these problems and learn how to solve them for yourself or at least find people that can help you do it. It will truly help your business grow. As the saying goes, you can feed a man a fish and he will eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. Well, look at that. We came back full circle with another metaphor about water. What do you know? I'd love it if you guys gave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you think you're subscribed, double check. Sometimes you get unsubscribed automatically. I don't know why, I just know that it happens. And don't forget the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below, get a free one month trial to Skillshare and unlimited classes. Thank you all, I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.